It's kind of a rainy day, gray day in early March 2004. But we're in a place where the sun always shines. <laughs> it's not always too cool down here, but <laughs> we're in the rectory at Our Lady of Victory Church on South Catherine Street in Plattsburgh. I don't think I've ever been down here before, but I'm sure I'll be a better person after having spent a little time here today with a very good reason to talk about a very important project. And uh, it's called the Gabriel Project or Project Gabriel. It's uh, many of you may be familiar with it. I'm sure a lot of you have never heard of Gabriel since he blew the horn. I've got to tell you before we even start, my father, we, we talked about it before the camera began, my father was a minister and he went to school in a little tiny place called Kingswood, Kentucky, way back when the feuding was really going full bore in the early part of the 20th century. And when he rode in on the back of a, what he called a razorback mule, rode into town to live with an old farmer by the name of Tom Gabbard in a, in a log cabin, and my father played the trumpet. So he's riding up through these mountains, playing the trumpet, and all of a sudden a bullet whizzed over his head. <laughs> One of these old farmers thought, thought he'd died and gone to heaven, or the devil was coming with a horn, or it was Gabriel or somebody. And when, when I said Gabriel, I remembered my father telling that story, <laughs> and that was his introduction to the hills in, in Kentucky. But in any case, Father Jerry Blow, how are you? I'm fine. I'm delighted to be here, and those people who know both of us know that we have had a little struggle with the, the breadth and the girth of it all. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I thought I was doing very well at losing 54 pounds until I walked in here today and saw this guy who was so skinny we could almost see through him. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 60 how many? 66. 66 pounds. It, it's too bad Dr. Atkins isn't with us anymore. We'd be, wouldn't we be good poster children? Huh? I, I, I would be, yes. I, you were ahead of me at one time, I recall. I kind of caught up and went ahead of you here. I'm feeling good about that. Uh, Come from behind here. I think it's wonderful. And it is a friendly competition. And we're, we'll have to quit before they, we, we become too emaciated to make it to mass. That's, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> But anyway, we're here today and we feel good and we got a lot to talk about. Who are our guests? This is Sherry Demires. We knew that. Hi, <laughs> Sherry. Hi, How are you? Hi, oh, thank boy. you. <laughs> Great to talk to you. And Sister Joan. Sister Joan, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. We're delighted to have both of you here today. We, we got so much to talk about. First of all, before we talk about Project Gabriel, which is very, very important, and I hope all the families who are viewing this program sit down and take a little while to watch this program. I think it's very important that you do. We, not necessarily politically oriented in this program, but some things we believe in, and this is one of those things, and we hope that, we hope that today you'll, you'll listen and then make up, make your educated guesses. Father, I've known you for a long time, but I don't know too much about your childhood and your background. Just briefly, where you been? I grew up right here in Plattsburgh, Bacoma Street. My father ran a nursing home for years, Adirondack Nursing Home. About 15, we left town. I think my father had some, something about owing a lot of people too much money. <laughs> no, no, we went down to Florida to open a motel, and then uh, about that time I went to the seminary, high school seminary, Watertown, from there to Wadhams Hall. After that, up to Christ the King in Olean, New York. Got ordained. I didn't know you were in Olean. Oh Olean, New York. Christ the King. a lot of time down there. Oh there my you go. Goodness. Yeah, and then uh, came to Champlain for five or six years. Put up with that bird behind the camera over there for a and, while. And married Calvin 24 years ago. 29. 29. <laughs> 29 years ago. I oh, I tell my two oldest kids. 20. <laughs> I'm sorry, my math wasn't very good. 29 years ago, what month? September. September. Wow. There you go. You did. You did at least one thing right. I did I one thing right in this world. Oh my goodness. Maybe his wife would agree, but I don't know. <laughs> She's a sweetheart. So then what? Well, after that, I went to Lowville for a couple of years, Augensburg. Then I became a pastor in my own right in Constable, Westville, and where you were talking about your oh, yes. circuit writer father. Yep. I was a circuit writer there for a few years, nine years, actually, three churches. Then the Messina, pastor there at St. Mary's. Ticonderoga for about eight months, and then here, I've been here for eight years at Our Lady of Victory. Has it been eight years? Eight years. 
Not a shred of controversy in that whole time. Oh, it's quiet as a lamb, I'll tell you. <laughs> Never got in trouble. Well, that's oh, just oh, just the way it is on this end of town, isn't it? <laughs> the south end of Blackbird. But, but you've never been afraid to stand up for what you believe in, and I admire that in anybody. And we certainly um, thank you for inviting us here today. You're it's certainly great welcome. to be here. Sherry? Yes? How about you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a native of Plattsburgh, although I did live away for quite a few years, but I always come back home. Um, I'm divorced. I've had some rough times in my life, which is what brought me into this program, trying to help these young girls. And I really like it. Um, you get close to them. This last one that just had her baby in January, that's her picture there. I've become very close to her. She's just like a daughter to me. And she refers to me as nanny to the baby, oh, which don't, don't you love I it? love it. I love it. I have four grandchildren. and. Um, my one son lives here in Plattsburgh, and he's estranged, so he does not let me see my grandchildren. And this kind of fills that gap somewhat. Some some people, for some people, every day is a good day. I try to make as many good days for myself and the people I know as possible. But Calvin knows, and most of our viewers know, that since I left the radio business in 1997, I work as a crime victims advocate in the local probation department. And so I, m I hear a lot of stories like yours every day of my life. And having gone through many of those things myself in my personal life, and hearing stories like yours, I realized, just as you were saying that, yes, we carried that cross, but guess what? I'm using what I've learned to help other people. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it helps me. It very much helps me. My other grandchild is in California, so I don't get to see that one often. I just came back from there visiting with him. But I, I, I really like this program. Um, and I think mainly for that reason, because what I've been through, I can give to someone else That's and help them go about. through it. You know. Okay. Well, we're going to talk a lot more about the program. Sister, how are you doing? No, I'm doing fine, thank you. I'm, you told me when I walked in the door that you've been listening to me since you were a little girl. Yes, you and Martin Mannix. <laughs> uh, we talked know. about Martin Mannix and yes. Chet Bosworth, Chet Bosworth. And the, yes. way back when. Oh, we used to, uh, I used to listen to them when I was young. It was really... Radio was a little different back in those days. It was just and radio, works, no television at No that television, time. and no. so that's how you got and All I'll never news. forget that incident, that bet that, that uh, Chet Bosworth and Martin Mannix made. We, for those of you uh, who may be viewing our program today who have no clue what we're talking about, we'll enlighten you. We'll <laughs> do our best to enlighten you throughout the course of this program. But back in the 1950s, um, Chet Bosworth and, and Martin Mannix rooted for opposing baseball teams. And during the World Series, they made a, a bet on the air, and they had to kind of uphold the yes. bet. Yeah. Whoever lost would push the other one down Margaret Street in a wheelbarrow. Yes. <laughs> well, Martin Mannix lost the bet and pushed Chet Bosworth down the street, the street. And somebody took a photograph of it, and somewhere, don't ask me to bring it up within five minutes, but in a drawer or a musty old box somewhere in my house, I have that photograph oh. to prove that Chet Bosworth was down, going down the street in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> That was right. A lot of people it's still talk about that. That's really a historical moment. Well, you know, in those days, the, the personalities of the people on the radio were, were, were people knew who they were in the community, and you could pull stunts like that and draw the people together, and it was a different world Absolutely. than we live in now. But those are, those are fun memories, and that was in the 1950s. Yes. And I had already been in Plattsburgh off and on working on construction building, the, helping to build the air base, and then came back here in 61, and, and Martin was, wasn't with us anymore. But then his son, Mike, Mike came to Mike, work, and yeah. he's a good friend. Sister, yes. tell us a little bit about your background. You've got a very interesting story to tell. Well, I'm, uh, I was born in Plattsburgh, but I was, I was growing, up, growing up in Danamore. And I lived in Danamore most of my life. And um, I entered the convent in 1956 at Graymore. I went to Graymore. And then a year I came out, I left Graymore. And then a year later, I married 
the fellow that I was going with when I went into the convent the first time. So on October 26th of 82, we celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary in the hospital because he was dying. And on Thanksgiving Day of 82, he died. Oh my goodness. And I worked for Father Martin as his cook in Dannemora for two years after that. And then I went to the Regina Maria Retreat House for a day of discovery, of finding different vocations that, you know, different orders that you could go into. And I met a sister from Our Lady of Victory there, who was Sister Louise. And uh, I had a girlfriend that was going to school at Our Lady of Victory, and she said, Joan, why don't you wait for me to graduate? We'll go into Graymore, to, uh, the Sisters of Charity, together. And she says, no. She said she wanted to go to Graymore. So I said, well, no, I don't think so, because I don't like that order. I don't like their habits. I don't like their ways, and I don't know them. <laughs> well, anyway. She went to Graymore, and I ended up entering the Sisters of Charity of St. Louis, all because of the influence that Sister Louise had on me. She was very, very uh, compassionate, very concerned. Uh, she gave me all the information that I needed. And then I went home that day, and I put the information on my bookcase, and I didn't look at it. So one day she sent me a letter, and this was around Easter time, and she said they were having a passion play at Our Lady of Victory. Would I like to join her? So I said, okay, I would, you know, I'd be happy to join her. So I came down and we went to the play, and then we went over to the convent after, and we had hot chocolate and so on and so forth. And then I started coming down. Oh no, I'm sorry. I took sick on. At Easter time, I came down with the flu and I was very sick. And every night and every morning, Sister Louise would call to see how I was. And I thought, well, if she carries enough to call me every morning, she'd call me every morning and say, good morning, sunshine. And then she'd say, good night, sweet dreams. And it made, it did something. You know, it was really an uplift. So I said, if she carries enough to do that, I'll read the material. So I did, and then I, I called her, and we started going for walks together. And then she said, what do you think about our order? And I said, well, I like it because your charism is exactly what I'm looking for, and that's the charism of charity. So she said, would you like to speak to our provincial? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, why? I said, because I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, she said, well, why don't you talk to her? So I said, all right, I'll talk to her. So she set up a meeting, and I spoke with Sister Ida, and Sister Ida said, well, I would like you to go to New Hampshire. We have a retreat house over there, and I would like you to see what you think about it. So I had to write uh, a letter um, saying why I wanted to enter the convent. And, and uh, then I went to New Hampshire with Sister Louise. And uh, the meeting that I had there was not appropriate. So I came back and I wrote a letter to Sister Ida telling her why I wouldn't accept going to the retreat house. And she was very, very understanding. She said, all right, Joan. She says, you'll start your work here. So I entered in July at the Sisters of Charity. And in September, after Sister Elizabeth died, I went to Clifton Park. And I did my pre-novitiate at Clifton Park. And that was one year. And then I had two years of the novitiate. And then in 1987, I made temporary vows. And my first mission was in Brookfield, Connecticut. Hmm. And I was there from 87 to 92. I worked at the Pope John Paul Nursing Home as a nurse's assistant. And then I worked there for about a month, and then um, the administrator asked me if I would become a social service designee. So I did, and I was promoted to that, posi that position. And then I was transferred back to Plattsburgh in 92 because we closed the house. 
Ooh. in Connecticut, which was very sad. I bet it was. We all oh, were sad about leaving. But you adjust, you know, when you come back. And then I started working here as a home health aide. And then in 95, I got transferred back to Clifton Park. So all together in Clifton Park, it was there nine years. And then I had, I worked in an Alzheimer's nursing home and I hurt my shoulder, so I had to have surgery. So I came back here for my surgery and because I was living alone, I was transferred back here to Plattsburgh. So here you are. And here I am working under the And the rest, as they say, <laughs> is history. <laughs> Every, Calvin and I have lived by the credo that everybody has a story to tell. It's true. And if you sit down just for a few minutes and break bread with people or oh, just yeah. Yeah. commune with people, you'll hear some of these stories and they're so fascinating and so interesting. I don't want to them up. Well, talk about it. <laughs> okay, I also have three children. My oldest daughter lives in Texas, Arlington, Texas. My youngest daughter lives in Virginia and my son lives in Jay, and they each have a child. My oldest grandchild is 17. She graduates this year from uh, Virginia, and then she's going to North Carolina University for pre-med. My grandson, my son's son, is a sophomore in high school, and my oldest daughter, Marianne's son, is 12 years old, and they live in Texas. Great children. What a rich story. You told me she had a story. I you did. You just did. weren't kidding me, were you? No. Sometimes we pontificate and flap our lips, but this time we had a good reason for it. We're going to continue our program. Now that we know the principles, we're going to talk about Project Gabriel as our program continues. <laughs> Well, we should have left the camera going. I've said this a thousand times. The best stories are yes. between takes on the camera. But we, in case you, in case you thought your eyes were playing tricks on you, our perspective <laughs> on our venue has changed. But just to the other side of the table, so we can get a better view of everybody. Calvin said everybody's looking away from the camera instead of toward it. Father, let's talk a little bit about Project Gabriel. Uh, for those of you who are uninitiated, I know what it's all about. And I know that Plattsburgh isn't, and Our Lady of Victory isn't the only church in the in the country that has this project going, but it deserves to be explained. Well, I'd like to, yeah, before I probably should start by saying that, uh, that in our book here, which we'll talk about later, this this project is quite extensive in, in Texas, in California. This is like almost something that's in almost every church in Texas, every Catholic church and many evangelical churches. Uh, the... Uh, it's quite uh, extensive in California, Maryland, Washington, Pennsylvania, and Arizona, uh, Arkansas, Ohio, and Rhode Island. And it's beginning to be move into New York State. Uh, we're actually the first people in, in New York State to have this program that I know of. There's really nobody that has this. The Diocese of Augsburg is the first to introduce it. Could I just tell you how we found would, out about this? I would love to. We got a, we got a tape that lasts for two hours, so there take, you go. Your, take your time. Well, we had, um, I think it was three years ago, a visit at um, here when we had our, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, oh my goodness, what we have in January there, the March for Life. <laughs> yes. And the fellow came, a young priest, younger priest than me, younger, uh, came to give a... <laughs> came to give a talk at St. John's here in Plattsburgh, um, and he was very good. He was expected uh, the following day on Monday to give a talk at Seton Catholic, and for some reason it was canceled. And the reason it was canceled was because there was a feeling that it would be too political and a little too um, uh, problematic. They did not want a lot of problems with the kids getting all upset or excited about listening to about abortion. and. They felt that some of the kids there would, would have problems and issues with that. So they didn't want them to come, and they asked to change it, which is their business, and I can understand that to a certain degree. That was about three or four years ago in another administration, um, not the present one. Uh, so I was called uh, to come and commiserate with this fellow, Father White, from the Priest for Life. And I went to have lunch with him. He was very upset and very hurt. 
that he wasn't he didn't quite understand what was going on. I explained to him, I said, don't take it personal. But we got talking during lunch, and all of a sudden he started about as he asked us, what about this Gabriel project? Would you be interested in this program? It's something that's coming out of the south and the west, moving into the northeast now. And this would be a good place to look at starting one of these. So for some reason, we were intrigued by this. So myself and the Apostles for Life, uh, people like Bart Gaffney, Deacon uh, Benzahowski and his wife Louise, um, who have uh, one of these uh, projects up in um, uh, Dannemora, uh, we began to talk about it. And uh, we basically found out it's a very simple program, very simple. What it is, is you find women or men, mainly women, uh, who are willing to be angels. Of course, some of them aren't angels in their personality. There but, are exceptions to that, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Sherry is here. She's one of our angels. She's sometimes one of our directors. Sometimes the angels. wings are more visible than others. Yeah, That's sometimes so they are. Sometimes <laughs> they're, you have to hide them so you don't see what's going on. But the angels, the, guard, the, the guardian angels, uh, the ladies, if you will, which a good share of them are, are angels, uh, a lot of it because these are women we're dealing with, so they, a, a woman understands, especially one that's been around the track a few times and knows what's going on out there and sees what's going on, knows how tough the world can be. The idea behind the Gabriel Project is to bring the children to term. Many women find themselves in terrible situations. Our sign out front says that. Uh, a, a woman in, in that's pregnant and in crisis, you come in here, we'll move heaven and earth to help you. To help you. Those words are chosen carefully. Very carefully, yes. And we want to let you know that we'll uh, we'll take care of you. We'll do what we can for you. We'll probably show you some of the stuff we do back here in a few minutes. But the basic premise right now, to just as we continue on here, is that we have a group of women who will walk with somebody and and help them and find them anything they need. Like their the angel manual here. Uh, that's the training part. But back here has all kinds of uh, various services that are available in the area. People like JCEO, the Moms Program, which is uh, one of our great resources, the Women's Center, uh, Birthright, uh, WIC. Uh, all these people uh, help us, Catholic Charities, uh, Salvation Army. Uh, all these programs we have in this book, different things that they can find. St. Vincent de Paul, all these organ social services have been a wonderful group. They've been one of our major uh, providers along with the Moms Program. Coming up on the outside now on this is the Interfaith Hospitality Group, oh, yes. which is beginning to bring us people. We're watching it very yeah, carefully. To help yeah. them out. So basically what we do, we find the women are, are referred to us. I, I, I act as Papa. They come see me. You're a good papa. I know it. I talk to them. <laughs> I work out a little understanding with them. And then I hook them up with Sister Joan, who hooks them up with an angel. You know? And the angel takes over uh, from there and gets them where they need to go. You need angels some are volunteers. They're volunteers. Volunteer angels. It's very angels. important because, I, I, as you know, I've talked a lot about volunteerism here in the North Country since I first came here. And I said to somebody in a brief email, the other night when they were talking about belonging to a volunteer organization, I said, volunteerism is what holds this North Country together. It's the fabric of this North Country. And this program, is the structure is not unlike other mentoring programs like Big Brother, Big Sister, and mentoring programs where you find somebody who's willing to take this ch poor child in crisis mm -hmm. under their wing and do what, like you said, move heaven and earth, whatever it takes mm -hmm. to get the to get the job. Sometimes done. they're so distraught when they come in, like this last one that I had. Some are more independent. They're, you know, they need a little bit of help, but some of them are just really at a total loss. Don't know which way to go, uh, up or down or crossways, and don't have a clue. This gal wasn't even from this town, so you know she knew no one and. Had no idea she was ready to have a baby and, you know. You know, for those of, those of us who've lived our, our personal and professional lives here in the North Country for a long time, you develop what I call contacts. Mm -hmm. So when you need assistance from somebody, you, you look in the old Rolodex of your mind or the one you have on your desk and call somebody. These people that, that Sherry's talking about don't have a clue. 
And I deal with many who don't even speak the language very well. That's true, too. Yeah. And they don't have any friends, so they don't know where to go. And what a great place to stop. Well, this gal here, when we, well, I, I'm not sure who found her or she found us or we found her. A little of both, I think. I think the mom's program got us the in touch with her. Program. Yeah, and, and we, when we found her, the first day we went up and found her, by the way, we take care of, we try to only take care of the city at this particular installation uh, within the city of Plattsburgh. But there's there's uh, four or five others, but the area where she was living, uh, there wasn't an, uh, a Gabriel project there, so we went up and uh, found her in an apartment sleeping on a coat, nothing. The social services had got her an apartment, thank God for that. But uh, when we say, uh, you know, that we're doing, uh, uh, you know, volunteer work. We also find, we, we, by hook or by crook, we find a lot of money. And we got her a bedroom set. We got her some uh, uh, furniture for a living room. Uh, we got her some clothing. Uh, the day we brought her to our household store, uh, which we have here on the, on the, uh, on the premises, um, we had a truckload of stuff to take up for her. She was like a wild woman here. She was having more fun than the barrel of monkeys. And, and you know, she's so appreciative that I, I love that. She just does not expect handouts, and she's so grateful for every little thing that you do for her. You know, I mean, she just is overwhelmed by this whole thing. She can't believe how much help she's gotten. Emotional as well as material things, you know. Yeah. She's just... Oh, it's a package. Mm -hmm. it, it's a package deal. When people, young people like that see what, you know, and you, your, your religious faith counts for a, a great deal. And it's because of your religious faith and your love for your fellow, fellow man and woman that you get involved in, in things like this. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, it, I hope it doesn't sound trite, but people who know me know that this is... This is the soapbox I've carried around for a long, long time. You have to give. And I firmly believe that when you do give, as you people give, it comes back, it comes back ten, yeah. tenfold, tenfold, twentyfold. You know, if you do things for other people, the pure satisfaction, like you just expressed it many times, the pure satisfaction, having been through what you've been through in your personal life, to go home at night and say, yeah. Or this when the phone neat. rings and it's Stephanie, yeah. and she'll say, hi, you know, this is Stephanie. And at the end of the conversation, she always says, I love you. Mm -hmm. It does it for me. <laughs> I do. Here you a little example of the, uh, I guess we can do this, huh? Yeah, pick it right up and yeah. turn it around so this Calvin is, uh, can get a look I at it. I happen to find, I forgot we had this in the, in the but, rectory here. But this is what it's all about. Yeah, this is a picture so where of, it starts. See, a lot of people think this is a picture of the Blessed Mother. It's not. It's a picture of, of, of our, our, they call it Our Lady of the Streets. And uh, what she's doing is carrying a baby, and she's looking for some place to go. And that's the picture that uh, you need to get on the front of our handbook here is this picture as well. Is, uh, what a great picture. Has that been it? around here for a long time? Been up on the wall here, yeah. One of the few things I didn't throw out when I got here. Uh, but this particular, <laughs> as you know, I'm one of those throw router type people. <laughs> But anyway, the, uh, this, this particular picture, is, it says it all. You know, it's on the cover of, the, uh, of this, and it's one of the, 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 the uh, logos of this program. Uh, the woman looking for help, being carried. Uh, not only is the child the child, is also the mother, which needs to be carried by somebody for a while until she can find her own way. We've had a lot of interesting stories. Uh, one would be that one there. It was interesting. At one point, I was beginning to wonder if we were ever going to get some of them uh, kind of want what they want, mm -hmm. and that's it. One of the things about this program, it's, it assists the woman to try to find her own way in the world, a little bit of faith life, a little better way of looking at things. And we finally found this one gal who really was a very... Uh, She's another one, had nothing. Found her in an apartment with nothing, living with some poor guy. I mean, when I found them, I had to, uh, they had nothing to eat. And they were living in a motel in this area. And they had a bed and everything, but it wasn't theirs. I mean, it was, uh, and we uh, took them to, uh, I'll put that over there if you want. I'll just hold that around there so you can still see your lovely face. Uh, the, uh, it's okay? Yeah. Uh, Anyway, she was another one, and we helped her and helped her and helped her, and, and slowly but surely began to find their way. And what was sad in the end was she ended up being arrested 
and being taken off to another state to serve a term, uh, she did something, you know, some of these mothers aren't all lily white, you know. And we still hear from her. She still calls. You know, do you still love me? You're mad at me? And uh, see, that's the good part. Didn't you take I care mean, of her? Yes, I did. Yeah. I was her angel. And okay. we gave her a foundation when she was here because she said, you know, sister, I've never had this kind of help. I've never had this kind of care. My mother didn't care about me, and neither did my father. And I said, well, do they know about this? And she said, yes, I did tell them. And uh, when she was here, she was supposed to get a job. She was supposed to start work the day that she was sent, you know, away. And the uh, husband that was living with her didn't know anything about it because this happened before she came up here. They came up here. So he took care of the baby while she was, you know, in jail. And um, he lost his job because he had to stay home to take care of the baby. So anyway, she got a transfer to New Hampshire, was it? Mm. New Hampshire. And he also went, his father came after him and he packed all the things. And I took care of the baby while he was getting ready to go. And um, the father took care of the baby for a while down there. And then she was able to care for the child. So she went into a halfway house. And she has a baby now, and the husband left her. So it's sad, but she's still you know, being independent. Uh, true to life stories don't always have happy endings. No. No. Uh, but I do. She's her okay. Happy and she's okay, and you know what? What what you what you helped her with up here mm -hmm. will stay with her for a long yes, time to come. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that pleases me tremendously about my job as a victim's advocate. You helped some of these young people especially. Mm -hmm. And even when they they're back on their feet and the idea is to get, build up their self-esteem and make them more self-reliant mm -hmm. than they were. You don't hear from them for two or three or four or five years and all of a sudden you get a call or an email, I'm okay, mm -hmm. just want to check in. And I, have a, I have another young girl that I'm the Gabriel Angel for and I went into her house because she has nothing and uh, her little girl said to me, or said to her mother, oh mommy, there's your angel. And I went in and she says, yes, I can't remember the child's name, but she said, yes, there's your angel. So I sat down and the little girl said to me, do you have wings? Do you fly? And I said, no, I don't have wings and I, I don't fly. But her mother said to the little girl, she's as much as an angel who cannot fly or who does not have wings, but she's an angel just like they are. And that made me feel quite quite good. It does make you feel you good. Know, she doing, was really doing nice things for people mm -hmm. is is a feel good thing. Yes. And it's not mm -hmm. just for the personal satisfaction, but it's mm -hmm. to be able to change well, a life. We had uh, one of our very first angels. Uh, for a long time we began to wonder, you know, like, well, uh, poor kid was uh, they all need to learn. You know, and she really as she came in she was like want, 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 want. But all of a sudden, we notice you're your first mother. Ain't, first mother, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was the first mother. Yeah, and 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 she was want 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 and 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 but you I know had a hard time with that. over a period of time, uh, they began to notice change in her. Yeah. Slowly but surely, they had a change in her. She just settled down. Uh, she came a long way and, and got help and got herself in a position where. She figured out some things about men and what they kind of do in their lives. Uh, she showed up one day at our bingo over here. And um, part of me, I, I had to go to confession afterwards. I thought, mm, look at this, you know, here we are. She came over to me and she said, um, I just want you to know I'm okay. And I want to give you some money. She gave me 500 bucks. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I almost fell on the floor. And I almost did when you told oh, me that. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, no, no, no. I said, we don't want that kind of money. I said, well, I'll, you know, she got to take something. I took a hundred, because I figured, well, you know, but can use it. But heck, you know, this is a gal that went from gimme, 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 to you know, I got to give back. Yeah. And I, it, that, those are things that are great. I think and are important. Those are the lessons. Yeah. yeah. yeah I it can was see truly you smiling amazing. over here. <laughs> it, it is truly so, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I kept saying to Father. Give me one I can mother. Give me one I could mother. And she wasn't one that wanted to be mothered. <laughs> she had her own mind, you know. 
So we, we had a little difficult time, the two of us. You know, I mean, we didn't have any dis big disagreement or anything like that, but we weren't meshing too well, you know. So I was really surprised when she came through with that, but she's doing a lot better. How many have you had so far? Do I was know? just told today, Carol told me, 28. 28 already? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Are they, they all from our parish? No. No. Uh, yeah. There's, uh, I think we've had 15. We've got the most that right. come through, but all told, we've had 28 all through the area. If we haven't expressed it completely enough, let me underscore that when this relationship of this mother and this angel are set up, it's you're in for the ride. Mm -hmm. You're in for the duration. It's not just let me show you how to get some food in your belly. Let me show you how to do this and that. It's a it's it is a package deal, mm -hmm. and there is a long list of spiritual and economic and psychological and mm -hmm. physical and help that you're you're willing to go. So there's a the, the spirit of uh, dedication for the cause is a good one and. You know, people make sometimes question our motives for getting involved in things, but this is a real humanitarian, you know, it's, it's, and it goes beyond it goes beyond the, the pure religious aspect of it. It's wanting to see a fellow human being in trouble step out of the mud hole. It's interesting how many people we've actually had the reaction and it kind of bothers me a little bit, but that we're helping women be promiscuous. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we have a lot of young people out there that just don't understand how to live out a relationship. And there's a lot of guys that sell them a bill of goods and they buy it. It's not that they're looking for any kind of sexual gratification. They're looking for love. love. They're looking for somebody to take care of them. And the guy is looking for that and he gets what he wants and he's gone. And this lady's left with a child to bring into the world. You know, this may sound terrible, but you can understand the quandary where uh, having an abortion begins to be, oh, I gotta get out of this. So that's, that, that's one way to do it. But, you know, what we're saying is no. We give them hope that they can go on, you know, that it's not the end of the world. Uh, we're there, they're not alone. Well, that's yeah. a big thing. If you could just see how these girls, it's just like watching a flower open up. You know, when you, you know, first that's, meet that's them. That's not a bad metaphor, is it? What is it? <laughs> that, you know, they're just all like this and scared. I mean, think of your worst possible moment in your life when you didn't know which way to turn. Uh, you, I've you're had just, a few of those. As <laughs> we, we all have, have yeah. yeah. And and you're you're just beside yourself, you know, like this is it. I just don't know where to go from here. And then someone comes in and you and shows you that you have some choices, you know, and well, you start to feel a little bit better and, and then you see this put into work and you say, Okay, this is helping my life. This is easier. I have a chair to sit on now, I have a, a bed to sleep in now, you know. And and it, you just watch that flower open up you know and mm -hmm. it's just beautiful it gives me the chills just to talk about we it never, we never tell them either you gotta go to church no we never tell them that we don't preach to them, don't <laughs> preach to them. i mean i i had to tell them that when we have our training session now this may sound terrible i'm a priest and all that good stuff but you know this is not about that because these people have been hurt by the church yeah. We've been throwing them out the door. I've had I have people in my own parish. There are people in other parishes who say, "Oh, you're helping be, uh, these people be promiscuous." No, we're not. We're trying to help them. Sherry described it very nicely. We're trying to bring them to a point where somebody out there loves them. Mm -hmm. They won't make this mistake yeah. again. They're not alone. They're just not alone. It takes us a long time to define love in our lifetimes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and the, the definition changes within ourselves as time goes on. But you're talking about love without any strings, you know? We'll, we'll show you what love is all about to the best of our ability and let, let you go out and make some discoveries. I had to laugh when you said we won't make them go to church. <laughs> Once again, I have, I have to interject my, my life's lessons. Because when, when I was a little kid, preach, I won't. <laughs> when I was a youngster, my father always had a wonderful sense of history and he would when something he thought was historical was happening he'd throw the kids in the car and we'd go and and see it when a jet plane ran into the empire state building when the normandy burned in the harbor in new york city and 
My my dad also did not try to uh, protect us from some of the negative things in the world. And my dad had missions in Harlem and in Chinatown and different places in the city. And and some of these were pretty rough areas when I was a youngster. But you know what? He'd walk in with with his little son in his hand and I'd walk into the Bowery or to Harlem or Chinatown and sit down and when you said it won't make them go to church, why they didn't get their bowl of soup until they heard the <laughs> heard the word of God. <laughs> heard the word of God. And they'd sit there and nine out of ten were snoring and you know, they were uh, leaning against the walls and so on. But 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 you know what I wanted to say was, while we don't do that, every one of them has asked to have their children baptized. Yeah. Oh dear! Now, Every so you're, now you're, wanna, you're melting to. my you're there, melting see? my heart. Stephanie's see? talking about yeah. turning Catholic, and she wants to. I love it. <laughs> I love it. But isn't just that kidding, beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Isn't that mm. beautiful? Well, we have a mm. mission, Gordy, and our mission is to respect all life, at any age and in any circumstance. And when we work as Gabriel Angels with these girls, these women, we become their friends. We become a role model for them, and they talk to us or they can't talk to somebody else. And they become very close to us because they know that we respect them and it's confidential. Yeah. You know, so they can say whatever they want to say to us, and they know that they can trust us and we won't reveal it. I, I, I have to say that the prospect of finding a lot of angels is sometimes a little difficult. A lot of these mentoring programs, it's a commitment, mm -hmm. a tremendous commitment, mm -hmm. and you can't leave after after you get the first base. Mm -hmm. You don't want to. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> after make you get the, the first circuit. base. You don't want to. You're you're just yeah. hooked in there. But it's hard. I know. I'm, I've been involved directly and indirectly with a lot of these mentoring programs, mm -hmm. and you know, formerly when we had the air base around here, there were a lot of bigs and littles, as they call them, and the big brothers and and, mm -hmm. and the big sister programs. But when the base left, it became so difficult. In their current pro programs through JCEO, it's very hard to find the adults who are willing to spend that mentoring time with kids. We have a, we have so you have to do a little recruiting, do yes, you? Yes, we have a new one that has joined us, and she's going to be excellent also. She's very eager, and she's a, a mother also. And she's had difficulty along the way, so she can relate to these these uh, Gabriel mothers, so she's going to be excellent. That's great. That's she's got like eight kids. Yeah. Well, that that qualifies yeah. you for oh, something, she's doesn't it? Yeah. She's got a, a huge family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I want to. Uh, you hold the microphone, Sherry. I just want to tip this up and show people what this is all about. And while I show it, is that a good angle, Cal? Yeah. You tell me what this is all about. Oh, Stephanie uh, gave birth on January thirteenth, and. Um, I'm not sure how it came about that the newspaper got a hold of it and wanted to come and do the story on this Gabriel project. So that's what this is. They came right to the hospital when the baby was born a few days after, which incidentally, I, I had gone on vacation for a month and I told Stephanie, you cannot have this baby until <laughs> I get back. <laughs> Boy, is that the power? You got the and, power. And I wasn't due back until the 10th of January and he was born on the 13th. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, and this newspaper article has gotten a lot of exposure for our project, which I'm real pleased with. A woman walked up to me in church one morning and handed me an envelope with $100 in it. Can I get that money, please? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you okay? <laughs> and some little uh, knitted hats for the newborns, which is part of our baby depot. People give us things like that. Um, I had another man that called me and said, you know, he didn't realize I was involved in something like that, but if we were ever doing a fundraiser or anything to let him know, and he would be glad to donate some money. Uh, we just, just had all kinds of exposure from this. Um, what else, Father, has come about because of this? Well, uh, yeah, today, yes. <laughs> a parishioner walked up to me and handed me a thousand dollars. Right. I'm not. You can't have that. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. We went out and bought some cribs and that kind of business that we can talk about later. But I did want to mention something that's occurring to me that she's not telling you over there. 
that's very interesting to sidelight. It's probably not directly about Gabriel Project, but it brings out the point you've been talking about is her sister oh, is yeah. quite famous in Michigan, correct? Yes. And she does a lot of work with, you want to tell them about that or should I? It doesn't matter. Go I ahead. can get the microphone between us. You can, ba you can <laughs> battle back and forth. What's well, all first of all, uh, I'm an adopted child. And five years ago, four or five years ago, this biological sister decided she was going to find her siblings. And she knew about a brother who lived in Morrisonville. So she got in touch with him, and he told her about me. She had no idea that I even existed. She did know about the others, but didn't know about them. me. Well, yes. I, mean, I don't know why she didn't call you. But anyway, uh, so that started, and we've been very close since. Now, she's in a program where she's an angel. A and we just, we talk about this all the time. It's like, isn't this so coincidental, you know? Now, she just received an award from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Uh, she got their Grand Angel Award, which is a very prestigious award. And they take her everywhere to speak. She she's, has speaking engagements all over. She She's just, she started this organization called... Uh, big family of Michigan and you need to look this up on the computer she has a website and you can see all the things that she has started she started it from no one absolutely no one and it has grown tremendously she has birthday parties. she was a foster child in many homes and abused very much so she works with all these foster children she speaks to social workers because there was a lot going on in the house where she was brought up with her mother, the, bi the biological mother. And social workers would come in and investigate and didn't even realize there were children hanging in the closet right there. Do I want to hear this story? No. Good so, God. It, yeah, but it, 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 goes, it gets worse than that, but we're not going to go there. Anyway, she, uh, she started this organization from absolutely nothing. And she's gotten this award, which I'm so proud of her for that. I mean, she, it's just, Is it? I have a hard time. Well, and I can understand why. Uh, uh, it's, it's absolutely essential to, to tell our viewers that even though we like to talk about very pleasant, sugary subjects, it's not a wonderful world out there for some people sometimes. And it's absolutely essential I think it it's we're beholden to do what we can to give back to our community but even if it's in small giving ways. back I mean she you, you know if you're given a lemon make lemonade yeah well there it is exactly but, but it's it's that background your background and her background that enables her to do this and I mean there are very famous stories about about young men and young women who were brought up in horrible circumstances and are now on the circuit, you know, talking. She's written a book. Um, it's not published yet. Uh, she's working on that, but she has written a book. That's marvelous. Yeah, and she just does so much for these foster children. She has birthday parties for them uh, because she never had one. Uh, she says, when you leave home, most children get something from their parents, you know, their hope chest kind of thing. And foster children don't have that. So she's got it set up so that everyone that, when they get 18 and they're out of the system, they get this suitcase, and it has, uh, like, a set of sheets in it and a, and a blanket and a, a set of dishes or all the things to start out with, you know. And, and, it, and it just goes on and on, all the things she does. But if you get a chance... Try to look up that website, and you'll get a lot more information on what it is. It's a beautiful well, Don't thing. let me leave here without writing that down, because okay. my memory's about this long. <laughs> the story, the name of the book is... Uh, <coughs> oh, Peter's Lullaby. Yeah, Peter, Peter's Peter. Lullaby. What a beautiful oh, name. But, uh, well, not really, because what it is is when he was hanging in the closet, he would, he would go, uh, uh, like that. And as long as she heard that, she knew that he was alive. That's why she called it that. And uh, it's a pretty sad uh, story. But I, I thought I'd throw that in there because just to see that these angels that we have are, 
sounds terrible to say they ain't ladies you know they've, they've been around <laughs> they've been through a lot it's kind of why i kind of pushed you to, to go that way with that just to see that you know they're not these little teacup type people that are with the dainty doilies and all that stuff these women How here do we have any against anything against <laughs> people, people with teacups <laughs> and daily i mean uh, i you'd be surprised how many mothers come in here with the idea that they've got to be you know yeah. on their best behavior it's like sweetheart we understand it, you know Look at me. Look at the people in this in this program. Uh, and, and the other ladies are like this. They've been through it. They know what's going on. They are not going to judge you because they've been there, done that, and got the T-shirt. You know. I, I'm so grateful for this program. I, I really am. It, it fills a lot of emptiness inside of me in like many said, ways. Like we said, you, it does. It's not really always a good idea to delve too deeply into the motives why we do things. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, why do we give to certain organizations? Why do we give our time to certain organizations? And a lot of it is to, to satisfy our own personal needs. And from my point of view, that part of it isn't nearly as important as what you do and what your sister does and what all these other angels do and what Father does every day, every day of his life for these people. What parts of this program how about we talk about how does let's say for example why how come not none in new york state before this well i don't know i mean, i guess it's just because beginning to come into this area i would like to start a little trouble if i could <laughs> yeah. if you don't it would mind. be very different I'll, if you I'll, didn't. Be, I'll be good i'll be good i won't be too bad it's, we've got six of these installations six we've got one here in plattsburgh at our lady of victory Moore's Forks and Moore's have one. They're a very active group. Ellenberg has one. Um, a good buddy up there is, uh, he's also going to be the new uh, pro-life director. The most, the most active one outside of Plattsburgh that we know of is Dan Mora, where the Ed Louise Mazahowski run that one there with Father Luby. And uh, that's, I think they've got six or seven uh, women that have gone through their program. Uh, they're the next one after us. But um, it's kind of sad in a way. You know, one of the things we've heard over the t over the times that we've done this is we've heard people say, well, we don't want the sign up on our front lawn because it ruins our flower pots, you know, or it doesn't make our, it hurts our landscape or whatever. You know, I don't know, if you come in here, you'll see all kinds of signs all over the place out there. Hey, you know, I just want to let people know what we got. And maybe it gets to the middle of the flower garden. I don't know. But uh, I don't think it's about flower gardens in, front, in my front lawn. It's about telling people we're here to help. And, you know, it's a shame in a way that we uh, we can't do that. It's a shame in a way that one in every area up here, especially in this area, where we still have uh, 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 children dying because of abortion. Uh, we really need to have this. And um, you know what? We're Catholics. Uh, we're here at Our Lady of Victory. But this doesn't have to be just a Catholic organization or a Catholic installation can go anywhere to do anything any any place I, Gabriel was Gabriel's horn as we were talking about earlier is something that's Protestant as well as Catholic we all think about that you know and being Gabriel angels is part and parcel of of all of our traditions particularly the Christian traditions yeah well let I don't know if we explained that to people why do we call it project Gabriel Gabriel project because of the fact that the Gabriel came to assist and came to help and the women are called Gabriel angels and uh, the angel Gabriel in particular was an angel who was out there uh, doing what had to be done, getting out there and making it happen, you know. Wasn't afraid to blow his horn in the middle of the battle and uh, let you know I'm here to get dirty right along with you. I'm not going to let you be alone. Fortunately, there, this program is getting some rather widespread v viewership all over the various counties and areas in northern New York. There might be people who are watching us right now who would like to figure out how to get their own project going. Uh, you've almost got like an instruction manual. How do they, oh. Should they contact you to see how to get started? Call me, 518-561-1842. I guess it's not an unlisted number. What was, it? What was that number again? What was that? 518-561-1842. I hope I'm not being bad by doing I don't think we that. have a way of scrolling it across the screen, so I hope you got your pen. What was that, Mark? Of course, I was playing with the power cord here and kind of cut the sound off. I have to remember not to twitch. I get excited <laughs> when I'm enjoying a program. What's the phone number again? 518-561-1842. And you said they can contact you by mail, and the That's address right. is? Our Lady of Victory, 4919 South Catherine Street, Plattsburgh, 12901.
put New York in there. Yeah, we'll put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> now what happens is we have the Apostles for Life, and we have people that are willing to come out, uh, Ed Louise Mazahowski, myself, uh, we've got about seven or eight other people that do training in this. What we'll do is we'll come into the, we went way down to Screwing Lake. I should mention we've got one down to Screwing Lake. I mentioned ah, Ali's. Great. Uh, we went way down there, had 25 women at the meeting last winter. And uh, we took, took them through a little training, explained the whole thing to them. That's what this part's all about of the book. Then we took them through a little communication workshop, different things you should or should not do when you're sitting with these people. What we emphasize here is don't judge, you know. We get some of our women, they're into non-smoking and all that stuff. You know, okay, they shouldn't be smoking, but, you know, don't preach and all that business. We have a harder time to keep away from preaching about smoking than we do about keeping away from preaching about religion. But uh, we try, try to do any preaching. It. When they get to know them, now they can be. Then you can do the Dutch uncle routine with them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and they'll accept that if they know oh, you. Sure. But they won't accept it right off the bat. Some of these gals have been through the mill, and then in the back, of course, we go through the various and sundry things that are available out there uh, that they can hook up with. And um, we did a, about three years ago. We had a lot of these organizations in the back: social services, moms, JCEO, WIC. They all came under one. Uh, place and, and they all went through and explained their stuff to the various uh, uh, angels we had. We're going to have a gathering pretty soon again uh, to talk over what we're going to be, uh, uh, what we've got available out there once again. But we're going to try to do these every six months to upgrade our angels as to what's going on out there, who's available, what's available, uh, what, need, what can be done by different organizations. But it's amazing after six months how many new things, how many new programs uh, these various organizations have. You know, I will say one thing. Social services gets a lot of, of bad raps from people, but they've been wonderful to us. They've been just so good. And when, they, when we need them, uh, they're there to, to show us the way. And moms and JCEO and all those good people have just been so good. Let me, let me just jump in here for one moment to say that uh, all of us are victims at one time or another in our lifetimes of, of sometimes petty crimes and sometimes very serious crimes. And as I said at the outset, and all our viewers say, and I don't mind saying uh, from, the, from the rooftop, that I work as a crime victim's advocate. And many of the young people you're dealing with have been uh, victims of personal injury crimes, domestic mm -hmm. violence, mm -hmm. stalking, rape, and many other crimes, and there are a number, a whole network of organizations in this community that work with crime victims. And I would say publicly that I would be delighted to come and talk to your groups anytime about what services are available oh, in our office and in other organizations in town because there We're is... We're looking for a main speaker for the next group of the session, so guess what? I think you just got a job. Oh, that's good. Thank you. I'm just so embarrassed to think about the fact that I might have to speak in public. There you go. I would, I would be delighted to yep. talk about it because there are some wonderful organizations and very dedicated people in this community who, who help crime victims. And there's an organization called the Crime Victims Board which uh, offers money to give restitution to victims of personal injury crimes, to help them pay for lost wages because of that crime, to help them pay for medical bills, to help them get professional counseling, mm -hmm. to help them pay for the gas mileage it takes to go to court to testify. Mm -hmm. And victims advocates such as myself and many other organizations in town will take those victims by the hand, these young people who just under, who understands the court system, right? Mm -hmm. That's part of our job to explain what's going to happen through this whole process and to walk with them hand in hand into the courtroom mm -hmm. and to help to restore them. And that's the name of the game. Now, can you help me out? It's a tough part of town. I have over a thousand dollars stolen off out of my pocket since I've been here. So, Isn't it amazing? I guess not. Huh? No. You know what? Uh, crime victims come in all shapes and sizes. Watch that shapes part. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been asked to speak at a summit uh, in New York State of mm. people uh, to talk about elder abuse. So I don't, I would, and I don't want to occupy a lot of the time for this program to talk about it. But there, it's not just young people and middle-aged people that get ripped off and injured in crimes. That, the crimes against senior, our beloved senior citizens mm -hmm. are sometimes the worst. 
And so uh, it's something people who are viewing this should consider. Well, I, I just want to say, we were talking the other day, who could we get in this area that's well-known, well-spoken, and can go on for two or three hours? No, I'm just kidding. Whatever but, uh, it, you no. know, whatever it takes. Yeah. No, I, and, uh, I, I carry so, that soapbox, and sure, I really, we'll, really care about what happens to, bring along. to victims of all kinds. And we've been talking about victims mm -hmm. since well, we, like we began this program today. today. Sure. And just you tell me when and where, and I will we'll do that. There. I think we just found our speaker. We've been kind of yes. agonizing over that. Who to get? That's good. So love, that's good. I love coffee. I can't eat dessert. But yeah, yeah. Sure. I'll bring you along <laughs> some low carb. I'll bring you some low carb candy bars for you. That's good too. I like that <laughs> idea. So there, uh, you. I want people to know that uh, you can get on the internet. Almost everybody's got a computer now, and if you type in in your search engine, whatever it might be, the Gabriel Project or Project Gabriel. You will learn not only, I don't know if this program is mentioned online anywhere, but many other programs, especially the ones that you mentioned in the beginning out west and so on, mm -hmm. yes, are, are online. No. This is probably Do we have a website coming? No. You don't have a website no. for this particular we program. We but you know what? Sure. At some point in time, if you <laughs> find somebody who has that facility, they can put a little tab on, on one of the other uh, sites so that people can find you. Mm -hmm. And it won't be a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I did some research earlier today to see how many programs there are er elsewhere in the country, and some of them are very sophisticated. In other words, they've been going for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, some pre pretty big, some of the ones out west especially. Oh, yeah. They're huge. Yeah. Huge. So you have brochures. What do you do when you first make the contact? How do you get the referral in the first place? Well, Where they, from, they come to the door. We, the one today, we had one come in today. I haven't told you about yes, that one yet. She came to the door. Uh oh. They see the sign out there. We have a, we have a bus. We have, one, one of the buses has a sign on it. I had a kid call me the other day. Some guy called me the other day. Hey, man. He says, my girl's pregnant, and I read your sign, and uh, can we come and see you? He never showed up, but she did. So he... he told her to come. So we get that out there. We got that sign out there. We've got the, the, the articles Sherry mentioned in the in the paper we have on a regular basis. Uh, we a good, I'd say a good half of it's that way. The other half of it comes to the organizations, moms, WIC, yeah. uh, social Especially services. Moms. It's good yeah. to know that. And word of mouth will be good too now that we're getting a little bit more exposure. You know, I have to say, uh, Hometown Cable, even though it does some wonderful things, and Calvin has been holding that camera on her shoulder since 1983, right? <laughs> 1983, doing hundreds and hundreds of these programs to help the community. I must throw out a compliment for most of the media in this area. The newspaper, the television stations, the radio stations understand that we live in a very special part of the country with very special needs and very special things to be grateful for. But when there is, the need is great, and you go to these people generally They'll give you some space, they'll give you some time because they understand that this is a news story. Just as, you know, uh, this, the big primaries that are going on the day we're recording this in, in, in early March is a big news story. And you have to understand the human stories too, don't mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the media, I have to I'll throw out a few compliments for the area. Oh, yeah. Look at the sites of that article. I mean, yeah. it's fantastic. I mean, very happy with a colored folder, for God's sakes. Yep. You know, I don't know if Cal was able to pick that up when he did that, but, yeah, of uh, course. you know, that, that's just such a good thing. And, our, our, you know, people will say, oh, the media slanted and all that stuff. And, eh, you know, that might happen on a couple of occasions when it comes to certain stories. But I find they try to be as objective as possible, even though we don't necessarily want the other side's story getting out. At least they're trying to, to, to balance the story. This one in particular, we're gratified, kept it on, on the focus on us. We, we try not to be confrontative, confrontational, I guess that's the right word. Uh, we don't want to get into big arguments and fights with any other organization, with the, whatever their particular stance is. We just want to help. There are battles and, and there are battlegrounds. Yeah, we don't want to fight those kind of battles. Yeah. That's not our point. That's not our issue. Uh, we are unashamedly and unabashedly pro-life, and we will never back away from that one. We have no intention of getting into big fights with people or talking uh, trash with anybody. That's not our point. Our point is that we want to say to those mothers out there, if you want to bring a child to term and you don't know any other way to do it, you come see us and we'll do what we can to get you straightened out. And, we'll, and, we'll, and we've done what it takes. 
we may find one mother one of these days that'll give us a bit of a challenge but uh we'll uh we've done so far so good the lord is good lord has taken care of us and provided us what we needed it when we needed it and unfortunately some of these mothers well, you you mentioned children and they are indeed oh children, children. having children yeah. absolutely but after they come to father um, he will either send them to sister Joan or have sister Joan get in touch with them or sometimes you assign an angel yourself which was the case with me and then we make an appointment with uh, the person and that's how it starts do you have a waiting list already or do you, have you got enough no, angels to go no, I, we haven't got an angel we'll find one go ahead yeah I uh, Carol Pulsfer is father's assistant and she just gave me the name of an, our newest Gabriel uh, mother, and I already have a Gabriel angel for her. Boy, that's wonderful. So it's, mm -hmm. it is very good. You have a waiting list, and it must drive you crazy when you can't get the right angel to help that person, oh, because yes. as soon as you find out about yeah. them, they're, they're needing the help today. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll find someone. because mm -hmm. there's always somebody out there for them. Mm -hmm. And you can have more than one, you can be working with more than one person. Mm -hmm. One angel can take on more than one person. You know, if need be. Yeah, I have two. I what? Have two. Uh, real question. What happens if they just don't click? You know, sometimes you work at you, it. You, you, you work at it to help. You don't get a second uh, angel involved. Not in usually. No? You work at that until you bring that Gabriel mother through, because uh, we wouldn't want to be left alone. And no matter if you click or not, you still have to make an effort to bring that that mother through. There, there is there been a do. couple of situations yeah. where we switched out because yeah, the mothers, the, the angel stays with them until uh, in a couple of situations. It hasn't been like they've gotten into cat fights or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes, uh, well, Sherry gave a good example. just don't mesh, you yeah. know, sometimes. It's not any different than like you and I, Father. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if I should stand up and move away or not. <laughs> When you were having difficulty with that, that uh, Gabriel mother, I took over that case. Yeah, but because you know she what? she was a young person, and no matter how Sherry tried to get in touch with her, she would not answer back. I mean, she did the same thing to me, but I went to her. I went. I found out where she lived, and well, I went to her. I went there, and then I worked with her, right, right. Uh, but she preferred the rest to come to Father Jerry and Carol right at the rectory. That's yeah. what she wanted to do. She wanted to deal right here. But you know, it does uh, it does involve personalities, and any of the, any of us who've taken courses in counseling and psychology courses and so on realize that the counselor doesn't always the personality doesn't always mesh. And until Absolutely. unless you can develop a good working relationship, then the counseling is not always as beneficial no. as it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the bottom line answer to Calvin's question is that uh, yeah, we'll we'll switch them out. Uh, the mother, the Gabriel angel stays with them until we can find somebody that's a little more, uh, in, in Sherry's case, it was the irresistible, uh, irresistible force meaning the immovable object. And uh, they just were too alike, or whatever you want to say. And that doesn't always work, you know. So uh, nobody's perfect out there, even you and I. But uh, the, uh, you Speak know. Speak for yourself, going. Father. <laughs> I, I did want to kind of bring up one more thing there that's kind of neat in this whole process. Uh, of course, Carol's stayed away, my, my, my worthy associate upstairs. She, she wanted, she's camera shy. and uh, But I, if I got her down here and talking, she probably would have, would have, she would have shut her up. She would have been fine. But she pushes yeah. the rest of us to do this, and, and she deserves a lot of credit. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's, she's done a lot of good work for this yeah. program, and she's always like, no, you go, you go, you go. <laughs> yeah. What she does, one of the things she does, I think this is a really special part of this, that's not in any of the liber Gabriel literature to do this. And by the way, it's a very important to, to mention that these things take on different uh, manifestations in different places. Like, for instance, Dana Moore is very different from us in how they do things. Their youth group is heavily involved in raising money for this thing. Uh, we don't have that here. Uh, we have different ways of doing it here. We use our stores, a piece of our store money uh, goes into the project to, 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 to finance it. So every time we get uh, our money in for the store, we take 15% right off the top, goes to the Gabriel Fund. Our parishioners are starting to get into the act and give more and more. Today, that $1,000 would floored me. I was like, whoa. But uh, the thing that they do, too, is we have two groups in the parish, the auxiliary for our knights and our altar and rosary. 
these two are now alternating, putting on uh, showers for these women that come in. And uh, I tried to, to say, well, you know what, we'll give you a couple hundred, three hundred dollars. You go out and buy the gifts, and that way you're not paying for it, any of the gifts. These women won't hear of it. They want to give to these girls. I love well, we, we do both. We, we shop here at the Baby Depot, depot mm -hmm. and a women buy, the buy their own, or they make homemade. The that's, last that's one, great too. one woman in there made the most beautiful baby blanket I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. the, the amount of work that went into that, but they, yeah, they just take it personally, you know. And this little gal here, Stephanie, she wants to meet now with the Alter Rosary Society because they were the ones that gave her her shower, so they can see the baby and this. And she wants, you know, she she's really thoughtful in that way, you know. It's not like okay, I got my gifts. And if you could have seen her, Gordy, that day she came into that shower, she thought it was going to be like. Sister Joan and Carol and myself, because those were the only ones she knew, right? She walked in that room, and here's this whole organization, right? She was like, who are all these people, you know? And she got the most beautiful gifts you can't even imagine. Carol brought me down here, and she said, go ahead and shop, right? And I kept saying, well, I don't want to take everything because, you know, there's other people. Take what you want. Take what you want. We, we, and we bought her a new crib. And we got the high chair, and we got a swing, and we got the little walker and car seat. I mean, all this big stuff, not to mention clothes with the tags still on them. I mean, she had everything, absolutely everything. It's amazing. It. And these are never, these are open-ended stories. Mm -hmm. They just continue on and on and on. It's the, it's the, as they say, the gift that keeps on giving. And when they come back to you a couple of years later and say thank you. Our Women's Auxiliary also donates to the Gabriel Project every month towards supplies for our, our Gabriel mothers. Every month they send a, a donation. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And that's the stuff you see on the shelves back Well, here. what we're going to do is stop here and, and so I can get up and move around a little bit and we'll get back in here and check out the store. Okay. okay. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go shopping. Yep. Let's talk about what we have behind us here. First oh. of all, I want to see that T-shirt. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, we uh, they found that. Back. We were just kind of getting set up for this, uh, to, to do this shot here. And uh, I uh, they said, oh, this is your sweatshirt we got for you today. So I got that in the middle of everything there. Are you glad it doesn't fit you yet? Right? Yeah. Oh, stop it. So, I love it. So anyway, we got rid oh, of that. Good hands. There. Right. Yeah, well, this is, uh, it's important, uh, the question was asked before was, uh, why the, suddenly we're not much different than birthright? And, and, and the, the, what we, we have here is not stuff specifically set up as part of this program. What we've done is, uh, this is stuff that's come in that people have donated to us. And uh, what we say is, well, it's there. Uh, uh, people have asked for it. And what's <laughs> interesting, whatever we get, for some strange reason, gets needed almost immediately. So we don't Almost say no like to it. Somebody up there is running the program here. Sure, sure, sure. Besides That's us, a, yeah. So we get baby powder goes out. We got a lot of baby powder. That's going to go out the door pretty quickly because our mothers come. I need this. Sure. I need that. So we've got it for some strange reason. It's always there. And uh, what we don't hang, hang, what doesn't hang around very much is these pampers, as you uh, well know. It's not course. something that that goes right. Those hang around. So they'll come in for some reason, and they're right out the door again because the ladies come and they'll say, "Well, I need this or I need that," or and we all come down. And sure enough, we've got it for them, and uh, they take it out the door. There's a lot here right now because we haven't heard too much from our ladies lately. But uh, well, I have to do shopping, so uh huh. Because they'll, we'll have the shower on the 13th, so a lot of this will go out. Yeah. And That'll go to their this, shower. Whenever this goes out, I do the shopping and resupply so that we don't run out in case somebody comes, like Father said, to the rectory. They need supplies. We've got something here for them. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to keep it on hand all the time. The, the other important thing to note is um, that we were talking about that shower early. That's not something we expect them to go to. We're happy to do it for them. We'll do it whether they're there or not, you know. Uh, it's not like a prerequisite they show up because some of these mothers are a little bit uh, reticent about coming out into the uh, coming out. And you the public. can understand why oh, they, yeah. they would seek that kind of anonymity mm -hmm. just because they saw this article in the paper that was 
That was uh, with everybody's approval and carefully mm. designed, and everybody was well aware of what's happened. But these the confidentiality in a program like mm. this is yeah. absolutely essential yeah, Steph, if, if they desire it. Steph had to say it's okay, and uh, yeah. yes. and the mother had to, the angel had to say it was okay, and uh, right. we had to okay it. So there's a lot of discussion involved yeah. in that, and uh, uh, so we wanted to do that. And uh, the paper's idea to do that, and uh, so it's very important to understand the mother is not required to do anything that puts her in the public eye. You know, we always want to make sure that their confidentiality is protected. And it's not every Gabriel Angel that is put on, on television, on the paper, you know, because like Father said, they're camera shy. They're, they are shy because of the situation. But we're glad you're not, sister, you know. No. And <laughs> Stephanie's sure not shy, like that's it. for sure. She loves this stuff. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's but look beautiful. at the stuff. Just look around here. Look oh, at yeah. the homemade. Look at the homemade blankets. Look at the I was just beautiful at the... homemade blankets, Sherry. Aren't they gorgeous? And that's a contribution really people can that. make, you know? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Look at this. It's huge. Oh, Look at it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Isn't that beautiful? That's a nice. I, think, uh, I, I do a lot of crafts, oh, oh, so I can really appreciate it. That's beautiful. I believe a woman at the household store made that. Really? Father, that, that uh, what's Chuck's wife's name? Chuck. It's good. They call her Pee-wee, but I don't want to put oh, that on television. Uh, Pee-wee Diamond, yeah. Well, oh, sure, why not? Never did know her real first name. I always call her Pee-wee. Okay. Yeah, yes. whatever I works. I believe she's the one that made that. The beautiful. She makes them over and over again for our, yeah. our Gabriel mothers. They're great, great things in the here. The ones over there. And Bush Gray were donated by your sisters yeah. at the convent. Wonderful. Most of this stuff is brand new, isn't it, Father, in here? Well, yeah, that's one of the things. Like I was just going to, I finally got, uh, the fellow that gave the, uh, the money this morning, I finally was able to get some, some uh, cribs in. We've got three cribs. We bought three cribs this morning. One's gone already to our new mother. Isn't uh, that amazing? She's very pregnant. So uh, she called up and said she's had quite a few. By the way, this is not your first child. Sometimes it can be a, this mother has had four children. Yeah. And uh, she's asked for help on this one because for some reason she's had some crisis over this one. We don't know the whole story yet because she's brand new. But... Um, uh, that one of them, I bought brand new, we bought three brand new ones this morning and they're gone already. This is uh, something I've been wanting to do for a while. We're a little short on cash. We get them as we go, but I wanted to have, I wanted to have them on tap. Now we're down to two as of this morning. We got this, we got them this morning and this one's gone already. One is gone already. So we have these nice, uh, these are really cool. We have uh, the girls, uh, I'm getting educated in, in baby stuff, you know. The, these these uh, new cribs, I start off as a crib. And they could be turned into a studio bed. Yeah. A youth the, bed. Yeah. What a great well, the kid can use what a it for five, wonderful six years. idea. Yeah. Yes. So the mother, I think I uh, stayed in a crib. A I've got a photograph somewhere of Gordy Little at age about six, still in the crib, standing there with, you know, those old uh, Spanky and our gang cartoons where they, when they had the mumps, they had the, the cloth wrapped around and tied on the top. Yeah. I'm standing there and my jowls are about this right big. There, yeah. and, and I'm sure my mother, who took the picture, said smile, and I felt like saying, smile? No way, I heard it. In those days, though, Gordy, the cribs were made so that you could lower the mattress Yeah. so that by the time you're done, you're almost on the floor. You yeah. know, I mean, it's uh, Well, it's, I remember. It's that we still low. have one of those old iron so cribs. It's, it's up like a our, bed. Yeah. But these, these, these will actually turn into a bed. That's wonderful. Yeah, they turn into a bed. We had uh, a new bed and a new mattress come into the, it was supposed to come into the store over there, over to the clothing store today. Mm -hmm. And a swing and crib sheets, a lot of things were coming in t over to the store today. Let's, you know, well, let's talk about that store just for a minute, because we've already mentioned it several times in the course of this program. That's a wonderful resource for this community, and I, I, you don't know how many times when I, when you didn't know I was here and I was bringing clients of mine up here who had their vouchers uh, to go shopping at various places and in the food shelves to get food and to come up here to Our Lady of Victory to the store. Oh, well, we'd like to have you come back sometime and take a look at that whenever you get a minute. You know, down the road a piece to take you around and show you the place. And today would be a crazy day to go over there. We've got the primaries going on and a few other things. But uh, uh, it's, uh, it would be a good place to come sometime just to see what we're doing and how they've uh, developed that. But that, as Sister was mentioning, uh, that's one of our big resources where a lot of stuff comes that we, we, we steal and bring over here. And the people, in the, in the people that are working the store, they will pull it right out automatically. They all look for it, you know. If they see anything like our sorters, uh, we watch the size. For uh, the size of the baby from zero to one year, we bring over here. 
and then the rest stays over there because we have to supply for the youngsters over there also. You know, because you've got uh, children that are from a year and up, and they need clothes also. So we we get the good ones. <laughs> I mean, they're not all good. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. we need supplies over here to start off with. Father Bill Edwards started a lot of this. When I got here, I'd like to say it was my idea. But see, I'm an old businessman from way back. You probably remember my father. There. Oh, very well. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that, that man there in a new business, he's like those cast iron boys, you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he, uh, they, 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 they like their money, and they knew how to make it. And when I got here, I, uh, Father Bill had started it as kind of a nice place for people to come and grab clothes. And I'm like, oh, I can make some money on this and still give away a lot of good stuff. We give away thirty thousand dollars worth of clothes a year. Come on, Our imagine prices. this is at twenty-five cents, fifty cents, seventy-five. Mm -hmm. cents. That's a lot of clothes at those prices. Mm -hmm. No, I had no idea. Until thirty thousand dollars. There's people like you that come up here and take it all. That it, blows it. my That's mind. Wow. <laughs> yeah, our shoes sell for fifty cents. Mm -hmm. Our blouses a dollar. Men's pants for a dollar. Men's shirts for a dollar. Coats three dollars. That's Almost a lot brand of clothes for thirty thousand dollars at those well, prices. Well, you have to realize these these people need that, and that's all most of them could afford mm -hmm. to. That we use it. It's been a fundraiser for the parish, for the school at the time, and the parish now. And but it's also been a uh, very important resource in the community. It's funny. I always say Tuesday is store fix day. You know, around here, they haven't, they haven't had a chance to get to the store in about three or four days. And you, I went over there this morning to make sure things were ready for the primary. And oh my goodness, there must have been 20 people standing there in the parking lot. I said, "You here to vote? No, we're here for the store." I had a guy one time come over here. Like we had an auction here. We tried to do a little. Um, uh, I guess I can remember to mention his name. Sure. You know, Steve Brody he come oh, over here, and he says, uh, I, "He opened the door, and he was looking it over. We're going to do a little auction, try to try to thin out. We had so much stuff. Oh my goodness! This was back when we had. We're using my garage here, and now we got it over there in the in the school. Now it's not a school anymore, and." Um, he said, I said, don't don't open that door, because you open that door, we're going to have 20 people in here. Oh, he says, if you can do that, you've got a million-dollar business. Ten minutes later, he was selling stuff to people, because they were coming in. It's better than the dollar store. <laughs> don't, don't, put really? down the, don't put down the competition now. <laughs> that one equal time. I, I want to show you something that's precious. Okay. You can hold on to it. We don't only have, have the, the sizes from the from zero up but we also have them let me break it this is for a preemie now look oh, at that look at this. that's for a baby that's you know it comes ahead of time isn't that precious isn't that beautiful they're beautiful and they're all brand new yeah you know i don't think it'd fit you father oh yeah <laughs> it, it's beautiful what you're doing here is pro providing a tremendous service to the community and we don't mean to look at this, look at this one. isn't that beautiful we don't mean to denigrate or or say that there aren't other organizations that are doing good oh, things in sure. this community because it is, as I mentioned before, it's a network. It's, it's important to know when we did the uh, first uh, gathering to see if this was something we wanted to do and you know, see if anybody would show up, we had 50, 60 people show up from all over the North Country to be part of this network and help us out. And people like Birthright came who do wonderful work. Uh, different kind of operation and only in the sense that uh, they try to stay out of the religion game you know we're you know it's decidedly catholic as i said before yeah. no I, we never would have guessed that <laughs> no <laughs> but I, I mean as i said before the protestants uh, the evangelicals anybody wants to do one of these you know and give us a call we'll we'll we'll, we'll welcome you but uh, you know uh, we don't we, we don't shy away from the the, the controversial aspects of it on, you know on, and birthright by 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 contrast we'll say no you know we don't want to yeah. get involved we just want to help people so it's a different way of looking at things yeah. and uh, it, it works it helps it people it takes a lot of people you know. to play a ball game mm -hmm. uh, i would See, just say I always say though it's one of the things i always say this is this is the catholic church saying we're going to put our money where our mouth is yeah. in other words we're not going to be out there saying you know you got to have your children and no abortions and all that kind of stuff this is about putting your money where your mouth is yeah. it's always bothered me over the years that we've done all this preaching but we don't uh, get ourselves out there and get our hands dirty in the process. I think we mentioned that premise right in the beginning of our program yeah. today, and it's, yeah. a, it's a wonderful thing to let people know about that. I was, you know, as, as many of our viewers know, Kay and I like to go to, for all the years I was on the radio, we couldn't go to Mass together on Sunday morning because I was always working on the radio on Sunday to, yeah, morning. To, yeah, yeah. And now 
it pleases me to go to the very first Mass on Sunday morning. So we're there at 7.30 in the morning. It takes me at least one verse of the first hymn for me to get my vocal cords limbered <laughs> up. But it's great. And then, and then we go to breakfast together with friends of ours, dear mm. friends of ours. And very often we'll reflect on what the homily was on, mm. on a given day mm -hmm. and, and the history of our church. The priests we can remember, mm -hmm. programs we can remember, other parishes. Calvin and I have, have done a series of programs with Dr. Sylvie Baudreau from Plattsburgh State mm. on, the, on the French connection. Mm -hmm. How and why did these people come down here? And why was there... How did St. Peter's get formed? And mm -hmm. How did St. John's get formed? And how did... How, what, well, how did Fox Hill get its name anyway? <laughs> yes, right. But you know, Our Lady of Victory's been on this end of town for a long time, hasn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Hundred years almost. Yeah, think about that. Hundred years that. and I got three, four more years. And we've talked, and and always the conversation comes around to Our Lady of Victory Academy. Mm -hmm. And what a sad. Where were you when it closed? Oh, the uh, the the high school. The high 69? school. Sixty-nine. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. uh, I was in high school at. Uh, I was in Watertown, going to seminary. I was here. I, I've talked about it on this program, but I don't mind mentioning it again. I was a young reporter. I'd already been in Plattsburgh for like, I don't know, eight years, covering news and doing things. And I was here with a tape recorder on that night. And when that announcement was made, mm -hmm. it was it was sorrow and gnashing of teeth. It mm -hmm. was a horrible. It's my alma mater. I really felt bad. I couldn't believe they were going to close that. Well, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's like all the other schools in town, like MAI and like St. Mm -hmm. John's and mm -hmm. and uh, all the high schools and the other grammar schools. It's part of a whole package, and it's Our Lady of Victory is a tremendous part of the tradition, not only in sports but academically. Oh, and yeah. that is a secretarial school after it closed. Well, when but, you think about those sisters, they came out of nowhere with well, nothing. And they worked their tails off yeah. to get that going. They started with that convent. They built all that themselves. I mean, they had the, you could see your face in that uh, that window, oh, that, yes. that floor over there, because the kids all went around with wax paper on there, yeah. keep it keep it going, you think know. Think about that. And, they, you know, and they, when I think about those girls, they would teach all day math, English, science. To me, I taught when I high school for many years, and I come home and I'd be half dead. Those girls stayed, and they they uh, they painted their rooms. They swept their floors. The holes, the they took care of the heating system. Talk about dedication. So they built cows and they had gardens. Yeah. And our sisters have been here for 200 years. And I'm sorry, 100 years. Mm -hmm. We've been here 100 years this yourself. year. And our organization, our congregation, has been in existence for 200 years. We celebrated that That's great. this year. What's good? Now, we're, again, we're recording this in early March. A primary day in early March on the, what is it, third, right? Second, Second I mean, of, of March in 2004. What's going to become of that building? Oh, well, it was sold to Behavioral Services North. Um, you know, the nuns gave us $75,000 out of that sale to help us out here, keep, keep the, 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 at that point, the Our Lady Victory Academy that was left. And, of course, that two years ago that got closed. Um, uh, my understanding is somebody has bought it for apartments. There's some kind of rumor running around. I wouldn't say the name because that would probably not be just, a very good thing. Just wonder, just <laughs> yeah. My understanding is that uh, that uh, Behavioral Services North was starting to work on it and build it. And they were going to put all their activity in one one. Um, that was the last I had heard. One yeah. basket, but uh, they ran it. Of course, 9/11 came along, and uh, that was the end of that. And a lot of money that was available. a lot of programs. Uh, well, it killed it. Just a need uh, that, that they was were, beyond what any of us could ever have imagined. They were doing the asbestos it. thing. My understanding is that maybe apartments now. Yeah. But I, I don't really know. I haven't seen much happening, so that's my understanding. That's a good thing, though. That's what I was told. Mm -hmm. It's going to be for housing. That it has been sold. Well, this is you housing. know neighborhoods are wonderful things, and we've had great neighborhoods in this community. The the boundaries of the neighborhoods are are getting a little bit fuzzy these days. Mm -hmm. But many years ago, it's great to talk to the old timers, mm -hmm. who had such great great neighborhood camaraderie. You know, where they really had allegiance to the people and the families and yeah. in their neighborhoods. And that wasn't a bad thing. You talk no. to people from New York City who were, uh, you know, who grew up in the Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn and elsewhere. And those, those are all good things. But, you know, this end of town has always had a very special 
image and connotation for me ever since I first came here, and that's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. People who are born and brought up on this end of town are pretty darn proud of it, like mm -hmm. like the Crickers were. And I wrote a yeah. couple of columns about the Crickers, and boy, I heard from Crickers in, in 58 states, I think. <laughs> I almost wrote you because you thought my father was a Cricker. Really? Lived up that way, yes, Isn't sir. That North, North Margaret Street up there with his grandmother, you yeah, know. People say, how dare you mention the word Crickers? You oh. wouldn't say Wiggletown in the paper, would you? I said, yes, yeah. and I did. Yeah. And I did, and talk about the history of it, and sure. people are proud oh, sure. to, because it's part of the heritage. Mm -hmm. And the best part of it is, the three of you were all born and brought up in this area, in this right? Area. Yes. I lived right across the street from the school. Come My on. father had a body and fender shop there uh, until I went in my freshman year of high school. And uh, we moved out on the Irish Settlement Road, but I continued going to school here. I graduated from Our Lady of Victory and went back for secretarial school. Did you really? Mm -hmm. We that were, was just, didn't just we a short time ago. we sister when the school closed, didn't we? When she was leaving. She was, she was leaving sister Martell was leaving, and mm -hmm. we were over at Evergreen and did an interview with her. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was the end of an era. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad when you yeah. think of she the energy. She She, she was uh, nominated. Talk about angels, right? Oh. She's completely French, but she was nominated as Irishman of the Year one year. Oh, that's all right. It was really... She's really done a lot for Plattsburgh. We're very proud of her. I think it's she's true. made a lot of friends and she's done a lot of work. Yeah, a lot of work. We were what else were we were talking about in church Sunday morning when when uh, where was it in either in Morrisonville I think in the olden days one of the priests did a, a one mass in French mm -hmm. every week. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, isn't that incredible? Oh sure. You think you'd be up to well, that? No, my father uh, <laughs> spoke French before he spoke English. You know, I mean he. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, we used to laugh at him, you know, and to laugh at him to his face because he had done us in. But uh, he used to, uh, when he'd write letters, we'd have to put it in English grammar for him because he'd write English words, but it would all be grammar. Me, I promise you, that, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, no, that's not the way you do it, you know. Like my uh, ancestors uh, who settled with the Dutch and, you know, yeah. throw the cat the window out, my, no, no. my mother used to say. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> It, you you people inspire the best in me. I'll tell you that. There you go. But you know what? It's this has been a good experience for us. We knew it would be. Uh, we had it scheduled one time previous to to coming here, and and you know life goes on, and we couldn't make it on a given day. And who knows? None of us know what tomorrow's going to bring. We hope we hope for the best. Thank you for coming. Well, you know this this does this is a project of hope, mm -hmm. and it's aptly named. Project Gabriel or Gabriel's Gabriel. Project, the Gabriel Project. And it's already assisted many, many, many poor uh, young people who are in crisis in this community and in other communities across the nation. And it pleases me personally, and I know it does Calvin, to uh, be able to spotlight a program like this because that way we, we get in on perpetuating the, the good feeling. And that hopefully you it'll bring have. us more mothers. Mm -hmm. who don't know about us. Well, I think we should point out, too, it's not just for the poor. It's just people that it's for any yeah. emotional yeah. help. Well, I'm, I, I met poor and I met poor in that, in, in that sense. The, these these uh, folks who, who just don't know where the end of that, that there is a lifeline and wouldn't know how to find the end of it anyway until you people come along. And so... We respect life. That's our mission. Yeah. yeah. All of you are to be tremendously commended for the work you do here and in many ways that we don't even have time to talk about in this project. Mm -hmm. The next time you see us on camera together, uh, we won't dare to, to, spin, talk, to stand sideways because the camera wouldn't be able to pick up oh, something. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, I think we've done Kayla, amazing. Keep the women away. Okay, we're talking. How many for you? 60 what? 66. 66 and my 54. You've Whoa. both done very well. You've both done very well. That's We've lost a person that's equivalent to somebody who's about 20 pounds heavier than my wife. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> this friend... So You're doing a lot of talking on that. I've got a I've got a friendly rivalry going with a, a newspaper columnist from down south. He started way after I did, and I'm afraid that he cheats every weekend. And I'm not there to see him. 
But you know, I'm grateful for be able to do this because at my age, I know that it makes me a, a healthier person. Oh, yes. And, and all I pray for in the beginning of every day is the same prayer we all have. Give me the strength mm -hmm. to do what I need to do today to help yeah. somebody yes. else. Yeah. Yes. And who could ask for anything more? You know what my boss always says? Needed a LeBlanc. She said, Lord, if you want me to work, then you've got to keep me healthy. Mm -hmm. She's a wonderful person. Yeah. She is. You know, before we end the program, I want to talk about choices. Because I talk to a lot of the victims that I work with about choices. Mm -hmm. And we all make a lot of choices in the course of a given day. And some of the choices I've made, and I'll speak for myself now, have not always been very good choices. But I tell people that a lot of your destiny is up to what you decide, how you decide to go from now on. Mm -hmm. And some of the choices are stripped from people. Well, their self-esteem is gone, and many of the people you're mm -hmm. dealing with are that, and they, they feel as though somebody else has been running their life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the dog and the dog's tail, and who's wagging who. And finally, you give them a little bit of the, the self-esteem they need back to, to organize things on their own and make healthier and better choices. And that's what we're all about. We're all about. Yeah. So again, Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you, sister. Thank you, Thank Sherry. You. Thank Very you, much. Father. All right. The Thin Man. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and who knows <laughs> where we're going to be next time for our little corner.